Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 86 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is a fish that is just so little known. Um, the only people that really seem to know about this fish are people in the aquarium trade. But I feel that the entire world should see the beauty of this fish. Today we are going to be talking about the... Bam! The... Everglades Pygmy Sunfish. So the Everglades Pygmy Sunfish, or scientific name Elisoma Evergladii. Again, that is Elisoma Evergladii, which you can see on this picture, actually. <laughs> um, it is part of the family Elisomatidae, which is the family of Pygmy Sunfish. Now, there is some contradiction. Some people still have... Uh, pygmy sunfish in the family Centrarchidae, which is just the family of sunfish, um, which, you know, we've had numerous uh, fish that have been in that family. But I still think that it's um, beneficial to have pygmy sunfish in their own family. So, LSO Matidae. Now, in terms of where this is found, um, they are found south of Florida to the northern end of the Everglades. And the Everglades is where the type specimen was found which you could probably surmise just from the common name in that this is the Everglades Pygmy Sunfish. But they are actually endemic to that region. And remember, endemic species mean that they are found in that um, part of the world and nowhere else. Now these are a marsh fish, as you can imagine them being found in the Everglades, um, found in bogs, swamps, canals, um, anything with like a mud or silt bottom that has shallow areas with a ton of vegetation, like a lot, a lot of vegetation. Um, and really, really slow moving water, just real crawling, almost dead water. As you can imagine with most bogs, swamps, things like that, they are gonna have that real smoke, slow moving water. Um, something else about this is they are a black water species of fish. Um, I mean, black water is that real, um, decay it's black water has a lot of decayed plant material that's really causes it to be get that super black um, smelling sometimes puts off like a odor of hydrogen uh, sulfide from the decaying plant material you know just basically think swamp and that's one of the you can uh, surmise where this fish is now you do this is the fish and it is you know gorgeous and beautiful but more often than not, your fish, if you see this fish, it's gonna look more like this, or it's gonna look like this. And that's very obvious um, if I show you these pictures. That's because that one was in breeding. Um, so don't expect to see them all the time like that first picture that's you know just absolutely gorgeous. But seeing the transition change is definitely something to behold. Um, also, if you haven't surmised this by the name or by the pictures now, this is a very small, small fish. You have a max length of 3.4 centimeters, which is 1.3 inches, um, but they're much more commonly found at 2.3 centimeters, 0 0.9 inches. Um, so, you know, basically like a gigantic one is like this, an average one is like this. Doesn't seem like a lot, but you're talking about a 50% increase in size um, so pretty large still that 1.3 incher um, it has a very small mouth but is actually decently sized for the rest of its body um, they do have this dark lip and it actually I always thought it was really neat and that the pygmy sunfish it has this really rounded top and it seemed to me that always that the bottom lip um, always seem to stick out almost like it's an underbite most fish have something of an overbite or they are knit together and open forward this one's kind of an underbite just really interesting um, they also have these rounded fins um, you know this rounded dorsal rounded anal fin and this really rounded caudal fin right there that's just a big round um, and what's actually another thing that's interesting is that the Ele the Elisomas have 
um, scales embedded in the top of the head. If you think back to or any of the fish, you know, you look at fish and they have plates on the top of the head, but very few of them actually have scales that go completely through. This, the Elisoma does have scales and it's actually embedded deep into the skin there. Just a little interesting fact, a little interesting tidbit. Okay, another interesting fact is that these fish do not actually have a lateral line. And we've talked about the lateral line before. The lateral line is um, a, it's a sensory organ that fish have. It's, if you look at a lot of fish, they have a dotted line going down their side. That's actually a pressure sensing system. That's how they can tell if things are swimming close to them without actually being able to see them. Now, we talked about their color a little bit. They're pretty variable in color and form. You know, you have this one here, this one here. You've got these here. You've got this one that's super black. Again, this isn't breeding, so don't give them form. But they're generally this sort of brown, um, with darker spots um, they'll have rows of spots on the fins right there um, but they're pretty bland I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't want to say bland outside of breeding but they are kind of bland um, females usually have a significantly less markings to no markings males are usually the ones that are heavily splotched um, Breeding males is when you get the sheer beauty, you know, you look getting into this um, Breeding color here. You have this one here. They're really dark and don't get me wrong. I just chose the Everglades because it's um, One of the most commonly known there are other um, Pygmy sunfish that probably are even better like the Okanofi um, Can really uh, pop in an aquarium like this one right here uh, that's an Okanofi. Um, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, but they'll have that, they'll get those really black coloration with these iridescent blue spots. They really pop. And you can see them outside of breeding. They'll usually have a couple of the iridescent scales coming along. Now, these are an invertivore fish, meaning that they eat insects. Um, they really prefer worms or crustace crustaceans, and they love, love baby snails. I mean, they will eat all the baby snails that you can imagine. Now, even though we talked about this fish being pretty endemic to the Everglades, it is actually a relatively common fish. It was estimated in 2013 that there were 100,000 individuals in the wild. That doesn't seem like a lot, but when you think of the small area, um, that's actually quite a bit. Uh, they are not listed of any sort of concern on any of the locations that they're found. Maybe on some of their fringe locations, they might be a little bit trouble. Um, but overall, they are considered a species of least concern um, because they are relatively stable. Now, the, Oak, uh, the Everglades uh, Pygmy Sunfish does tend to live alone, and males are actually usually territorial, especially after breeding. Um, during breeding, the female will lay 40 to 60 eggs, and then the males actually guard the eggs. Um, but outside of breeding season, males will still create a territory over a good um, site of food. Of food production so if they found like a little worm patch they will set up a territory over there and chase off other males but um, when food is actually when there's plenty of food and it's evenly distributed across um, the swamp or anything like that the males will actually just range freely and will actually not establish territories it's one of the very few instances where um, the fish is situationally territorial so that's pretty interesting um, we talked about the eggs something that's really interesting and might was almost the interesting fact that I made today um, the interesting fact is that they lay their eggs actually in the vegetation um, that doesn't seem like that big a deal but considering that almost every other sunfish out there besides the pygmy sunfish lay their eggs in cleared out nests or gravel nests on the bottom um, to me that was just that's really um, 
different than what you would think most other sunfish. So that was, that was close, close to my interesting fact. But the interesting fact I did choose may not be an interesting fact at all. Um, we've talked about, we talked about this at the beginning of the video. Um, the interesting fact that I want to say is that these are actually very well established in the aquarium trade. In fact, one author considers the Everglades Pygmy Sunfish to be the best known member of the Pygmy Sunfish species in the aquarium hobby. Now, I should mention that there are a ton of people out there who say I have Everglades Pygmy Sunfish and they don't actually have Everglades. They'll have Gilberti or they'll have Okanofi um, Pygmy Sunfish. Uh, that's not their fault. Um, people are usually fairly well uneducated when it comes to fish one of the reasons that i started fish friday um but they're only you can find these for about eight to twenty dollars anywhere in that range um is how you can find them um but the interesting fact that i really want to drive home is that these are perfect perfect aquarium fish for people that live in like in a one bedroom apartment or they have an office or something like that because these fish go perfectly in a what's called a nano aquarium and a nano aquarium is these little aquariums uh, think like the goldfish bowl or beta bowls that people have that they have their fish on their deal don't get that and put these in there but get like they make little tiny aquariums just like that that you can put like one male and two females in that will do beautifully you turn the pump way down low um, you keep the water at a certain temperature you'll get their breeding color you can actually trick them into making their breeding colors stay year long by changing out waters and things like that but they're a perfect perfect desktop of aquarium fish so if you enjoy fish you enjoy aquariums but you don't really have the space try and find a little nano aquarium there's a ton of them out there there used to be only a couple like the jbj nano cube or things like that go find one of those little tiny uh, desktop aquariums find this fish put it in there and then you just feed them like little frozen food pellets every once in a while not frozen food pellets i should mention like frozen blood worms things like that these fish really tend to like um really tend to go after frozen foods or fresh foods um, they don't seem to take flakes very well so i should mention that but to me that is the most interesting fact and the the fact that people always love aquarium they love going to the aquariums but the number one concern is for people like having aquariums is i don't have the space for it well here is your answer this beautiful fish can be yours um, for the cost of the aquarium and 15 bucks per fish to me that just seems like it boggles me that people don't really think of something like this when they still like aquariums just interesting fact to me whether or not it's true i don't know but thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope to see you again if i don't please be safe have a great day take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones please leave, please leave a like comment and subscribe my goodness, I wish I could talk today. If you do, I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Um, the little baby ping also says goodbye. She has been a trooper during this video today. Real nice, quiet, happy baby. But once again, take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And peace.